Happy fourth Sunday of Easter, friends. Thanks for joining me, Father Ron Hoy at the God Minute on Breaking Open the Word. And do we have a word today? <laughs> it is incredible. It's John uh, chapter 10, verse 27 to 30. Here it is. Jesus told them, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The good news. <laughs> the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, in fact, indeed. Oh, my. This is why we call the Bible good news. <laughs> I mean, did you hear it? Can there be any better news than this? Talk about the promise of hope from the mouth of Jesus himself. I know you. I give you eternal life. You will never perish. Friends, today I want to reflect with you just a bit on the gift of hope. Now, we've been hearing a lot lately over the last few weeks here after Easter about the, the building and the spread of the church in our world after the resurrection of Jesus. And I'm always left amazed when I really think about and reflect on how our church, our faith, came to be. You know, the, the Jesus part, that's not so hard, of course. In fact, that's the easy part. It's after Jesus where he sends out just a handful of his disciples to preach, to teach, to live the message of the kingdom. And from those few people, we have what we have. I mean, that's mind boggling to me. I mean, how do you do that? How, how do you go out amidst great adversity, and we know from Scripture what these men and women had to put up with, you know, and violence and death because of what they were preaching and living and teaching. <laughs> Just because of who you are, you receive such vitriol and hatred, and yet... You continue to proclaim the good news in such a way that, that others are not only drawn to it, but to choose, but, but choose to live their lives in it, to become church. <laughs> you know, with I mean, think about this, with Jesus. With Jesus no longer there. Now, you know, when the disciples lived and did what they did with Jesus, that was a little bit easier because he was there. He was their leader. He was their strength. But now he is not there physically, encouraging and supporting, pushing you on and assuring you that everything is going to work out. I mean, St. Paul you know, the greatest of our evangelizers and witnesses of the faith, witness of the faith, who did more than probably anyone else in establishing and building the church, was in prison for so much of his life because of what he believed and lived. He was tortured and a victim of violence and hatred because of who and what he was doing. And yet, as we read in his letters in Scripture, he was filled with such life and assurance and who and, and what he was about, a sheep of the great shepherd Jesus. Amidst all of that adversity, and how do you do that? I don't know that I would. The answer, hope, hope. Their belief and relationship with Jesus, with God in their lives was, was so fierce, so attuned and real that nothing 
could turn them from the most wonderful and powerful gift in their lives, Jesus. Despite the trials and the sufferings, even their fear and probably doubt, hope always prevailed. God, do I want that. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead confirmed the truth that makes hope possible. That he is our king, our savior. That no force of darkness or suffering or fear or violence can displace the love of God holding and leading you if you believe. That's what Jesus tells us in the scripture today. Raising Jesus from the dead God took away what scares us the most, death and the fear of nothingness. That is what Jesus means in this gospel today of everlasting life, not an end, a beginning. Not that our struggles in this life will go away. God knows we read from Paul and many of the disciples, they don't, but that Jesus will lead us through them to a land of hope and plenty that only He can promise. <sighs> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question, friends. What do you spend more time doing? Worrying or being hopeful? <laughs> yeah, I think we all probably know the answer to that question. So much of our day to day lives, thoughts hover around worry. You know, I think for many of us, for ourselves, for others, we worry about the world, the war in Ukraine, our own personal struggles, worrying about our kids, their choices, health struggles, financial squeeze, retirement, worrying. Will I make it through it? And on and on and on. But if we truly believe in and embrace our faith and believe in a God who so deeply cares and loves you, who died for you and promised eternal life, who asks us to give our concerns to him so that he can lead us through them in a way that we never could. And if we really truly believe that as these early disciples did, why do we worry at all? We will know the power and the gift of hope in our lives. It will dominate every facet of our being. So friends, I know I'm going over, so let me end <clears throat> with a line in scripture that I love. It's from 1 Peter. And he says this, Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. And always then be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. I love that. Hope is born from our desire and our love for Jesus in our lives. Amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you for being with me. Let's work on that this week together and pray for one another in that, shall we? And may God's blessing now be upon you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.